Hello everybody. So our last two videos we talked about rib cage shape and we talked about spinal curve. And I wanted to talk about those first because I think they set this necessary, you know, as we're getting into these more advanced topics, they set these necessary guidelines um, and this, this, you know, kind of helpful way to think about the landscape. But now let's make it more complicated because it usually is. So what if I see somebody doing a push-up and their elbows look like this. Left elbow flares, right elbow tucks harder. So to me, I, I see this one a lot. Um, I don't see it the other way. I, honestly, I don't, I've never noticed it. I'm always looking for it this way now because I notice it, um, but I've never seen it this way. What is going on? So if you're familiar with the um, common compensatory pattern that that people take the shape of the rib cage is generally less wide on the right and wider on the left okay and it kind of looks like this more relaxed it might look like this okay if i if i take that into function then it <laughs> generally looks like this right because my elbows my my sh well let's start further back my if my rib cage is wide on the left, the left uh, scapula is being externally rotated and pulled outward. It's externally rotated and then downwardly rotated. And to get stability, I can't do this because if I'm if if I'm positioned this way, I can't get the uh, the glenoid head in the socket of the labrum. So what I have to do is do something like this. And now I can kind of move it a little bit and I can kind of stick it together a little bit. Similar idea here, if everything's short, I can just pin it because it's got some leverage. I can pin it closer to my side. So maybe if you're seeing this asymmetrical elbow flare, you need to look here. You need to look at what this is doing. One, one visual test you can do is you can look for shoulder height. I don't think that tells you everything because if I have a depressed rib cage on the right and an elevated rib cage on the left, but I have an elevated shoulder on the right, um, sometimes you know something is off, but it still it looks kind of level, right? You can see my head is tilted, but my shoulder level is you know not that far off, so it's misleading. It doesn't tell the whole story. Other things you can look at visually, you can just say, hey, if I draw a line, if I look at the middle of the sternum, is it in the middle of the body, for one, and is it equally distant, equidistant uh, between both axilla? <coughs> so axilla is armpit. Um, I draw this line from sternum to armpit, and I just try to check the width. You could have somebody take their uh, shirt and make it really tight <clears throat> and you know let's try to exaggerate it not that I need to try very hard and sometimes when you're extra bad you can you can see a little bit more width on the left and less on the right um, I could look for pec tone sometimes the left pec looks really broad and that's kind of tying into this sternum to axilla thing and sometimes the right pec looks really tight but short. Um, just just a bunch of different things you can look at. Uh, the other thing that I like to try is just different side plank variations. So can you crunch over one of your sides? Can you exhale while you're there? And how does it feel? So if you feel like you're not feeling it, but I could I look at it and I say that doesn't look quite right, then I know you just you're not getting there. You can't get there. So I need to find another cue or another exercise. And if if you are doing it and you're like, whoa, that is crazy. Oh my God, it's cramping. I gotta stop. I gotta stop. And then and then maybe it's too hard. Or maybe if if you know you have the guts, you just you're sick in the head enough and you just double down and you try it some more. Um, you know, a lot, lot more theory in this video, a lot less applicability. Um, but once you start to address asymmetries like this, you're not really sure what's going on. But I can tell you generally there's some sort of rib cage asymmetry. And if the left elbow is flared and the right elbow is tucked, you've probably got a wide one on the left 
and a narrow one on the right. Now it's not always that simple because sometimes the lower rib cage is doing something different than the upper rib cage, but after you, you don't need to worry about it until you've secured the lower rib cage. So make sure I get rid of the flare that, uh, you know, the rib flare that might stick out of people's shirts when they do bench presses and whatnot. Um, and then just reevaluate where you're at. If you're still noticing it, it's probably going to have gone away a little bit because when I secure this, I start to be able to rotate to this way and I start to be able to draw more air into the upper rib cage on the right side. Um, but sometimes it's not enough and sometimes you need to look at something else. Sometimes you need to drive more apical lung expansion on the right side. Sometimes you need to ask yourself, what is going to do that? Sometimes you need to say, how can I ensure that they keep the left lower rib cage secured over here because if you're anything like me that is just the first thing to go no matter what you can you can drive apical lung expansion for me but i'm going to try my hardest to get rid of my lower rib cage security so maybe i need to consider how i'm securing myself over there with these muscles with the ab with the uh uh, shortening of the intercostals, maybe even a little bit of the left lat, but we don't want to really, you know, it's not that you need to do pull downs, right? So lat can be a little misleading. Um, obliques is a big one. The serratus over here, and even you'll feel some of the uh, lower trap. And, you know, I had my lower trap cramp the other day as I was cueing this. I think I was even doing a bench press and it was crazy. Um, so you'll feel all sorts of stuff on that left side if you need to secure this lower left rib hump um, or rib uh, flare. And then uh, for after that, maybe I need to look into ex more expansion in the right upper uh, lung. What's going to do that? What's going to open up these upper ribs? Well, the neck can do it, but I would venture to guess you probably don't want their necks to turn on or your neck to turn on anymore. Um, other things, what is connected to the rib cage via muscle? It is the uh, shoulder blade. And the shoulder is what's going to dictate a lot of this stuff. So if I can secure over here, I can use the pressure of the air to just kind of float up this way. But I want to make sure I'm not getting it with the neck. I want to make sure I'm getting it with arm muscles or with just pressure from holding this over. So again, we secure over here, but maybe we need to pull the upper ribs up via the pec minor via scapular posterior tilt uh, maybe we need to get posterior tilt and and a little bit of downward rotation with the long head of the triceps on that side <sighs> maybe we just need to focus on intercostal inhibition and we need to reach or we need to hang from a bar um, those are just a bunch of different ideas uh, I think I've said everything I can say on a single video about asymmetry in the rib cage and the push up and elbow flare and blah, 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 blah. If you have any questions, which I'm sure you do, feel free to leave them below and I'll try to answer them.